I gotta say, I got a lot of respect for High Ground. That first capsule they did with 100 Thieves, I was not easy on that board. A 65% mechanical keyboard that might actually put the thieves in 100 Thieves. They could have just ghosted me after that video. I honestly would have understood. But they're back today with their latest keyboard capsule, an officially licensed collab with popular and confusing anime, Attack on Titan. This is the Dedicate Your Heart capsule and includes keyboards, keycaps, and mouse pads in both Levi and Colossal Titan designs, plus a Mikasa and Eren jelly bag. I'm not an anime guy at all. I'm doing my best. This is a simple translucent poly crossbody bag with metal hardware. It has high ground and AOT branding with Mikasa on one side and Aaron on the other goes for 40 bucks. The pads are 900 by 400 millimeters and are surprisingly good. They come packaged in a tube so there's no wave at all when they roll out totally flat. The printing looks great. High ground logo in one corner, AOT logo in the lower right corner. These are rubber backed, three millimeter thick. They have stitched edges that are really flat to the pad, really nice consistent stitching. The surface and the stitching kind of feel like a fanatic dash. So these are totally suitable for gaming and not just aesthetic. It was a nice surprise. These are priced at 50 bucks. So you're definitely paying that collab tax, but you're getting a quality pad that's actually functional. The Keyboards are the star of the show here though, and I was definitely curious to see what kind of improvements they'd made over their initial board. That board was essentially a GK rebrand platform, 65% with some entry-level Gateron red switches, some pretty decent looking caps, a silicone plate dampener for a pretty premium price. Look, I'm not lost on the idea that branded merch, retail gaming boards, and serious custom keyboards are all different animals, different audiences. You can't really review them the same way, but I graded that first board hard. Like the review itself was hard, not me personally. I really like that they've branded the individual boxes here. So even if you don't opt for that full capsule experience, you still get packaging that reflects it being a collector's collab. Inside, we still have the same high ground puller, but they have upgraded to a braided cable this time. It is still that GKRK style, but a host of improvements to that base formula. So we still have that same 65% layout with dedicated arrows. The case this time is like a translucent smoke gray with the serial numbered plate on the back. This is a nice touch, but you can tell this little sticker here is pretty thin. Like you can see the creases where they applied it. Devastated that I didn't get number 60. You can see the big high ground word mark behind the case. This is molded into this big two piece silicone insert in the bottom. This helps the sound quite a bit, but it also adds a decent amount of weight. This board immediately feels better in the hand because of that. Keycaps are still die sub PBT, a little thicker than last time. We still have that all over print with the legends located on the front faces of the caps instead of the top. They did lose those secondary function legends like on the Efro, so it does feel less cluttered. I like that. These have a really smooth texture, not at the same quality level as like the Novel Keys PBT that we just looked at, but the printing is really consistent and the space bar is a straight. These aren't like a true black black due to the die sub. They have like a bluish hue to them. We have the high ground logo on the inner key, attack on Titan on the space bar, and the scout shield on the escape key. Like I said, you can get this board in either Levi or Colossal Titan. These are an all over print graphic, which high ground is starting to be known for. The Titan board is kind of a tough read. Like you have to be at just the right angle to really grasp the full graphic, but that's just kind of the nature of printing like this. We also have that issue where some of the secondary legends are going to be tougher to read due to the graphics, but again, that just kind of comes with it. The Levi board to me is much cleaner. It winds up with some nice grayscale and these red accents. If you just like the caps and don't need the boards, these sets will also be available at $60 per. Under the caps, the Gat Reds are no more. And instead we find custom colored versions of the TTC heart switch mind-blowing. The TTC Heart is a really solid stock switch that we've looked at before on one of the Ducky Boys, but with the smoke gray housing color that they're calling the Titan Heart. It's tough to capture on camera, but these actually have a little plastic heart captured in the stem of each switch. This is a big level up. These don't need lube. They sound and feel great. Awesome to see. Of course, the board is still hot swap should you want to change these out, but you really wouldn't want to. We have five pin sockets with per-key RGB. These are north facing, so your LEDs will work with shine through or backlit keycaps if you ever want to go that way. They have stayed with the shiny metallic plate, and despite the kind of OEM look. I get it. It's a really reflective surface, which helps the RGB backlighting. And unlike the white painted plates that we see from brands like Ducky, this won't get scuffed if you decide to hot swap your switches. We still have the silicone plate dampener. It's white this time around versus orange. It fits the theme of the board better. And we still have plate mount stabs. Yes, there's a trade off here. PCB mount are always more stable. Like you can see the housing wobble here, but plate mounts are super easy to remove and mount. Realistically, the core market for this board is probably not going to care about this at all, but they are pretty rattly. The space bar definitely has some challenges. These are factory lubed, but it's really sparse. And like most factory lube, it's inconsistent. This is almost completely fixable with the lube syringe. The space bar is still a little stubborn.
I mean, that kind of speaks for itself, right? The board sounds pretty good. The stabilizers are the opportunity here. It's a firm typing experience. Like there's no flex or anything, but the switches are super smooth, no scratch. Thicker caps seem to have a lower pitch and having all the internal space inside the case basically filled with silicone adds up to a board that for me sounds surprisingly good. I'm impressed with the strides they've made between that first keyboard and this board. When that first review dropped, I did have a handful of people reach out and tell me I was too hard on it or I was expecting too much for what was essentially a merch keyboard. I get that. I understand that the core market for that board or this board are probably not super keyboard nerds. Most people care about the collab, the branding, the exclusivity of the drop, not the technical details. But what we have here is objectively a much better board in terms of components, feel, and sound. I like the aesthetic tweaks. Of course, it's not going to hang with a custom keyboard that costs a couple hundred dollars for a bare bones kit, and they do still have some work to do on their stabilizers and the factory lube there. But at $145, I like that Attack on Titan fans can grab something like this and not feel like they had to compromise on quality just to get the branding. Big props to High Ground for not getting in their feelings, but going back to the lab and leveling up to deliver a board like this. The hype and the demand for this capsule are real. These will likely be gone within minutes. The drop opens May 6th at noon Pacific, and you need to be fast. Flippers will probably be all over this one. That's it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.